Welcome back, everybody. March 6, 2018, 1.48 p.m. And we have a ongoing situation. Um, actually, this is beginning here um, in the north part of Australia. The Gulf of Carpentaria uh, is where this low-pressure system is as of right now. And many of these models have a potential Category 3 to 4 even five in equivalent if you were uh, comparing it to the Atlantic hurricane uh, scale um, as far as a cyclone goes. Now this thing seems to be developing really quickly. Now if you see I'm down here, I'm on the 13th, so I'm going to backtrack for you guys to show you exactly what they think may be going on with this cyclone. Now as you can see, it is crossing the landmass here. Uh, kind of near the Beagle Gulf. It's like the Van uh, Demon Gulf area, which is right around here. Um, a few of these spaghetti plots have this thing moving up and around. One has it going straight down here, which may not be as significant, but when you follow this pattern here, this thing seems to want to cross land and then develop into a massive cyclone. And just the readings I'm getting uh, about at the 13th, we're talking well over a hundred miles an hour and I'm only 10 meters off the ground here. You gotta be careful with people that uh, do the hurricane and cyclone analysis. They have this set to 500 meters which significantly changes the wind speeds. Now not many people live 1500 feet in the air so um, if you notice anyone that's doing videos like this and they have this section of the the screen cut off you can be sure that they're trying to manipulate the wind here now I'm gonna set this back to 10 meters off the ground which is where most of the population lives and you can easily see we have well over a hundred mile an hour winds going by the 14th we have measurements of uh, over 125 miles an hour now that's anywhere from 110 to 120 knots in speed which is what these cyclones are actually registered as. Now, if this does take place, this area of Australia needs to be under severe watch, um, as this cyclone is certainly nothing to mess around with. Now, again, we are talking six to seven days out, and if you remember from last year, hurricane season, um, anything five days and beyond is really not something you want to put a lot of chips into. But just the fact that we are seeing this on multiple charts is uh, very intriguing to me. And if this does take place, um, look at this, guys. We are talking well over 100 miles an hour on landfall on this part of Australia. Now, this is also the uh, Tiamor Sea. And um, I guess to the north up here, we have Tiamor Leste, which is an island, this island right here, which could also be affected by this, depending on the direction it wants to take. Uh, massive, massive cyclone. Uh, cyclones spin in a clockwise direction. We are in the southern hemisphere. Northern hemisphere is why our hurricanes spin in a uh, counterclockwise mode. So... Uh, here is another view of it on Tropical Tidbits. I'm going to move forward here. This is the GFS version. Now they have the pressure dropping to about 984 as it hits the land going across this top area of Australia. And it doesn't seem to lose much pressure, maybe 10 to 12 millibars. And then boom, the second it hits the water again, this thing just flares right back up, right to 977, 959, 944, 927. That is very significant. And if this thing makes a landfall here, um, I have been checking on Google Earth. I don't see much as far as civilization goes. Now, you've got to be careful with Google Earth because sometimes uh, parts of different continents, they don't really register on Google Earth. So you can clearly see there are airports in this area. So there has to be people. Um, people from Australia, I'm sure I'm sounding a little weird not knowing these areas. I am beginning to get familiar with all these different areas of Australia, being that I've been covering the cyclones. But uh, airport, 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 uh, we have named forests here. So uh, I'm certain there's people in these areas. And like I said, it is beginning. The low is currently in the Gulf of Carpentaria right now. 
and uh, like I said, one spaghetti model has it coming down this way, and then a bunch of them have it coming up this way, and then reforming right in this area. So this is certainly something to look out for. And then on top of that, I just want to throw this in here, guys. Papua New Guinea, if you remember that 7.5 to 7.8 earthquake uh, we have been covering over the last couple of weeks, uh, we just had a 6.7 earthquake in the exact same area. Uh, these tremors have been going off for well over a week and a half now, none of them below a 4.0. So there is something certainly going on in this area of Papua New Guinea. They cannot catch a break. Now, I had a uh, sub down below in these videos that's offering to send me uh, exclusive pictures of what's going on in this area, and they claim that there is... Uh, significant significant damage going on and again like I said there's a lot of people that live in these areas and if you notice here on Google Earth if you uh, right here this is uh, certainly a volcano this is uh, it looks to be covered in forest and grass it may be um, a, a very dormant volcano but it is a volcano nonetheless so when you see activity like this going around a volcano you never know what's gonna happen I'm not saying this is gonna go off in any way um, again, there are plenty of channels out there that cover earthquakes much more in depth than I do, but certainly something to uh, keep an eye out. 6.7 earthquake is no joke, um, especially a week and a half to two weeks after having a 7.5 that was uh, in the news for a significant amount of time. And all these earthquakes here are all well above 4.0, and that's been going on for days and days and days now. So. Uh, with that said, uh, this system right here that we're talking about, this is actually Invest uh, 98P Invest. It is not named yet, but um, certainly will be named if this thing ends up crossing over this piece of land here and then becoming a cyclone. So this is an alert going out to uh, my friends in Australia. This is uh, potentially a very big situation going on, and it is something I'm going to keep an eye on. Uh, that pressure drop is pretty rapid. Look at this, 985, 977, then it drops to 959 and then 944. And this has the potential, like I said, if you compare it to our Atlantic Hurricane um, scale system, uh, that is a Category 3 to Category 4 and possibly could reach Cat 5 speeds. Now again, in knots, that's about 120 knots, maybe a little more if you get into the Cat 5 region. But um, certainly a very significant system. Now, I'll back up once more, and I'll show you guys exactly the path this thing is uh, beginning to take. The current low pressure is right here. Now, I'm going to go day by day. This would be the 7th. Here is the 8th. This is the 9th. 10th, we begin to see the rotation. So it almost comes down, and then it swoops back up. We get to see our the beginning of the rotations. We're pushing 50 mile an hour winds. By the 11th, it crosses over this landmass, still keeping its vortex, the clockwise vortex, which is why it's a cyclone. And then between the 11th and 12th, look at the amount of distance this thing covers. And the second it gets back into that water, which is uh, perfectly sustainable for cyclones, 80 degrees and above is what the, these things need. Uh, we are back into basically tropical storm category one uh, type situation. And then by the 13th, we are full blown cyclone. Uh, 100 mile an hour winds easily and it continues to strengthen from then on until we have a landfall now I have uh, Google Earth pulled up once again for you that would be this area right here uh, in Australia and if you remember we had a massive cyclone that not only hit this area but continued to pass all the way through the entire continent and came out the other side so the potential is there for these storms, these cyclones, to cross massive amounts of landmass and then uh, reform on the other side of things. So if, that be, if that's the case with this type of storm, it will pass over this very easily. It may even hug the coast a little bit, and that will, that's what would put these other smaller islands at risk with this storm. So I'm certainly going to be keeping an eye on this. Um, I'll keep you all posted, but um, certainly worth posting when it comes to a cyclone of this size. Uh, when we're talking about category three, four, or even five by the time it hits land. Now again, we are seven days out from this. A lot can change, but again, the information is worth posting. 
Uh, so anyone in this area of Australia, if you do not know about this, I suggest you start looking at these charts I bring up. I will link a few in the description box, and I will bring you further information on it, guys. Um, and also, keep an eye on that area of Papua New Guinea. They have not ca uh, caught a break in over two weeks now. And again, I should have some exclusive pictures of um, damage and uh, road destruction, stuff like that. Um, that uh, really no one's seen before, so that should be pretty interesting. Uh, I will be back with the uh, the U.S. forecast uh, shortly, but I needed to point this out to you guys. Uh, everyone, stay safe. Have a good day. Bye bye.